All right, what's up, YouTube? Addicting Air here. Um, today we're going to be starting with another one of these um, certification guides. They're very, they're going to be similar, but I'm going to try to go over some main points of the test you kind of need to know. Um, maybe a little bit of tricks. They're all a little bit different. Um, the wording is slightly different. The questions, the content of the questions are obviously different. They do overlap, but they're different. So um, let's get on to it. We're going to go over the Network Plus, the N10. 007 or N10-007. Um, I think this is the most recent Network Plus. I don't think you can take the older Network Pluses. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to go over the most updated one, if I'm not mistaken. So um, let's get on to it. We're going to start with objectives here. Um, I always recommend for if you're right before the test, I want to say the last week before the test, go over the objectives. Make sure you know like I said, let me zoom in a little bit. You don't need to know everything about these subjects, but you need to know, you know, what they are and why they're important. You know, collision detection, uh, you know, what collision domains are, what broadcast, the difference between these different types of cast, um, you know, MAC address tables, what ARP is, how it works, DHCP, you know, OSPF, open, is it open, uh, shortest past first, open shortest path first i think that's what it is um that's what it stands for correct me if i'm wrong but you need to know pretty much what all of these are um and why they're important so i would definitely recommend before you the week before go over these objectives i know they may not seem very useful but just go like a checklist just go right here um you know i know what ssh does and what port it runs on check you know uh you know i know the different layers of the osi model you you know you would like okay so what is physical what does it mean is it physical basically means um usually just like it will data sorry data link is ethernet but physical is just like the actual wire physically there's not much physical that you need to know but it kind of starts for data link just know that the layer one is physical data link would be ethernet and then network and you know just know what sits what protocol set at each um layer of the osi model so know like you know um, there's also Mac and LLC in the data link. There's two separate parts to it. Know what the biggest, you know, transport protocols are, TCP, UDP, you know, networking, IP, which is pretty much IP. Layer 3 is pretty much just IP. But besides the point, just know what runs on each layer. Know, you know, application layer usually has HTTP. Um, hopefully I'm not saying these wrong. It's been a little bit. Um, definitely, definitely. I would go over VLANs, know what they are, what they mean, why why they why VLANs exist you know um also something else i would say is definitely go over definitely subnetting huge subnetting's huge even if it, you don't get that many questions on the test which i don't know because like i said the tests are a pool of questions that are randomized so for me i got a lot of it but you may not subnetting something you need to know um pretty much as long as as even if you're in security and you're not even in you know you don't deal with uh switches and routers you kind of just read logs you still need to know what subnets are because you need to know what devices are in the same subnet and what can what subnets can communicate with each other you also got to understand uh how bits work in a way you don't need to learn binary but you need to understand um what certain addresses like if so usually um i I think IP addresses are a 32-bit address. Eight, they're separated by eight bits each. Yeah, so you don't need to know binary. Um, we need to understand CIDR notation, and if it says like slash 30, that means there's 30 bits taken. So 30 of the 32 bits are ones, and that means that you technically have um, what is it like three hosts up? Technically, one usable host, right? It goes one, two, four. Yeah, so you would have. The one usable host you need to know that as well you need to know that whenever you have like a certain range of hosts let's say you have like um i don't know you have like uh 128 hosts uh you need to know that two of them are one is for broadcast one is for the domain controller so you technically have like 126 usable hosts there's just you need to go in on subnetting not just for the tests, but if you go into IT in general, subnetting is very important. It's a huge part of security. Um, it's also, you know, um, you don't want to buy a whole IP 
uh, a domain that you don't need. You don't you don't want more hosts than you're, you're paying for. Or sorry, you don't want to pay for more hosts than you're using, right? So I would definitely go into I uh, you know IP addresses, subnetting, CIDR notation. Um, maybe even learn. I I would recommend learning how to read binary. Um, just the thirty two bits, the first thirty two bits for um for IP addresses. Um, but that's definitely something I would go over. Uh, also something else I want to go over. Remember, most of these questions will be some sort of scenario based. You're not going to get like, hey, um, you know, I need this wire to run across a hundred meters with 10 gigabit speed. Um, what cable do I use? It's not like directly like that. It's like, uh, John, the network admin, or sorry, I don't know, uh, whatever it is, the network admin wants to run a cable um, from this office to that office, which is uh, to 100 meters long. Um, he's looking to have uh, one gig of uh, throughput, you know, um, what would be uh, the best recommendation? And it wouldn't even be like just different cat cables. It'll just give you different recommendations. And one of them will be like, use this cable and then make sure you do this or that. It's never directly given to you. You're never going to get, boom, you know, what the what does, what is cat 5e, what is cat 6, you know, what those type of things are. It's going to give you very, very, um, uh, like, not vague, but they're going to give you a very complicated scenario that you just have to pick out what you need to um, get out of that question. Um, besides that, you're going to you just know that the network, I always recommend people to take the security plus first. Because the network plus does kind of overlap with security plus, so you will have a lot of questions that are not not similar, but let's say um, you know some things they learn in security plus about like uh, lands and you know uh, network security. You do learn network security. There is network security in network plus. Um, there's not many much of it, but you'll just understanding the general concepts. Also, the ports do overlap. So if you go right here, these ports you do need to know these for security plus also. Like I said, if you don't know HTTP is 80 and HTTPS is 443, study again. You're not ready for the test. You need another week. That is core. You need to know those two ports. Those are in every single test almost. You just need to know. Um, you need to know backups, um, what, how different types of backups are performed, you know, different types of differential between full, full backup is just full backup, what differential is, what incremental is. Um, I think there's one more time I'm jumping over my mind right now you definitely need to know know all wireless standards um 802.1 and then a bunch of standards what the difference are some of them are poe which is power over ethernet know what that is basically um allows the ethernet core to also transmit electricity so you could power certain things with the ethernet core so it's used a lot in like voip phones because they need power but you don't want to have a power cable and Ethernet cable, so it's built in. Not every device supports it. Both the cable needs to support it and the device it's connected to needs to support it, I'm pretty sure. I think there's PoE cables. Um, I'm pretty sure on that. So it's been a long time since I've gone over the basics. Sometimes you just kind of forget. Um, let's see, what is this? Okay, so these are just business continuity. So these are the backups I was talking about, universal power supplies. These do come up even in future tests. I know I can tell you 100% that in CISA Plus, you will see a lot of business continuity because that is a big part of analyzing and risk assessment. I'm actually currently studying for the CAP exam, which is an IC squared test. And that is on um, compliance and compliance is a big, it's really connected to risk assessment and business continuity. So this is if you want to go into the more um, compliance route where you do more paperwork and make sure that uh, systems are abiding by the, the law that, you know, let's say um, the law says, you know, ev the banks need to do up. You need to do audits every six months. You need to make sure that the bank is doing that. Um, and, you know, obviously much more than need to things need to be patched every week, things like that. Um, there here are the different types of backup, differential, incremental, full, which I talked about. Uh, uh, let's see. What else is there? Uh, we got recovery, cold, warm, and hot sites. Just know the difference. Cold is pretty much just basically just a room. It doesn't even have connectivity yet. Warm is kind of 
the infrastructure is there. It might take maybe a couple hours to set up, uh, maybe more than a couple hours, half a day to get people in, to set up the set it up to get back going. Uh, hot sites are basically you can switch over to them instantly. Uh, maybe like you get very little downtime, but if let's say your main site goes down, hot sites instantly kick on. Um, they these you, hot sites usually have their own generators, their own power supplies, uh, everything they need uh, separately in another location even geographically um let's see just, i just wanted to go over all the the things because i already went over how definitely make sure you take a ton of practice tests that's all you need to do do two weeks of reviewing the actual content and then like i want to say four weeks of just practice tests practice test practice test practice test there's tons of free online um uh, Basically, you can just look up Network Plus uh, practice questions and just do those. Just even if they're not similar to the test, just do all of them. You need to just understand how they ask the questions. Um, I know CompTIA has official questions. I think you, those are free. If they're not, I would recommend getting them. Network security, this is what I was talking about. This is a lot of stuff that you saw in the Security Plus if you did take it. If you're not coming from the Security Plus, and these will be new from you, you know, but biometrics, I think most people do know what that is. Fingerprints, iris readers, uh, face ID is on your phones. That's the biometric badges, smart cards, basically the same thing. Um, key fobs, locks. These are all security, um, you know, uh, in networks that you probably went over. I know there's a lot of radius and uh, TACAX plus and Kerberos, especially on the, uh, the security plus so if you studied them now you don't need to go over them too far because you do you should have a general understanding um these are different uh, um uh you know security standards for wireless you just need to know basically which one's the best um what each one does uh i wouldn't go too far into this this is somewhere where i'm still not that strong in wireless networks and the different types of standards and what they each do and which one's better and which one's worse and why um, but you know mac filtering is pretty pre-shared keys they're pretty um you know self-explanatory geofencing based on where your location is you can't even log in onto the wireless network um you know things multi-factor is very important but these are i feel like these are kind of self-explanatory something you know password something you have like a badge something you are would be a biometric uh, somewhere you are would be like geofencing, like you're, um, you know, you'd be tracked and they'd say, oh, why are you logging in from Spain when we're a U.S. company um, and we don't have any employees that are in Spain uh, or you specifically are not supposed to be in Spain, things like that. Uh, something you do. So this would be like a pattern. Maybe, you know how some uh, some mobile devices have you draw like like squares or like something like some type of pattern to unlock your phone instead of like a passcode that would be something you do um you know network access control that is very important port security you should have gone this over uh security plus what ports to open you know how to make sure they're opened or closed what to use and be sure be familiar with nmap you might get a little bit of that on the test um let's see i'm just going over all of these i guess i guess this will be the video because you should already know if you watch my i can't speak sorry the security plus video is to just do two weeks just learn the learn the concepts maybe watch a couple youtube videos two weeks of that four weeks of practice tests. that's basically i would say every test i've every certificate i've taken has used those um that that's my methodology and that's what works practice tests a lot of them um no duplex uh half duplex what it why half duplex is not the greatest no difference between latency and jitter. Uh, I think latency is how long it takes for your packet to receive, um, receive like the, get to, to get to the destination, and how long it takes to respond back. Um, jitter, I think, is between packets, so the the latency between the packets you send, or not the latency between, but the the time between packets you send and um, you receive, like how. Um, how like spaced out they are and if they're evenly spaced out or if they just if they skips packets or if it just doesn't respond for a while where you'll you'll be fine and then it'll freeze it'll jitter it'll be really bad in music and then it'll go back 
Um, yeah, but you know, back to duplex, you know, half duplex where you can't send and receive at the same time is pretty old now. You don't see it quite often, but it, it is out there. Um, damage cables just make sense. Uh, remember, I think tr network troubleshooting, it will go over this. Whenever you're troubleshooting, I think the general consensus is look at the OSI model, uh, work from bottom to top. So let's say your computer's not turning on, or let's say it's not connecting um, to the network. First thing you check for is, you know, is there an ether is the Ethernet cable plugged in um, or, you know, physical issues. Is the power turned on? Is your computer turned on? Did you click the button? Um, you know, data link, data link would be more Ethernet cable, actually, but physical would also be wiring. They're kind of overlapping the troubleshoot world. Uh, network would be subnetting, um, you know, uh, just it would be more networking, more VLANs. Are you in the same, right VLAN? Maybe you're misconfigured. Maybe DHCP did you bad. Um, transport would be, you know, you just run, it's just not sending the packets, but go in that order. Usually most people's problems are at layer one for like me and you, oh, I forgot to plug in the power. You know, I plugged in my laptop, it didn't, it didn't have battery, but I, I forgot to like, you know how some cord or extension cords have like a switch where you turn them on and you know, I forgot to switch that on. Um, but things like that, I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to go over like basic things. I could make a long video just going pretty much over everything. These acronyms right here, I would say um, a good a good piece of advice with acronyms is usually things that have P, the letter P in it is protocol. So like ARP, address resolution protocol. Um, see like a PIPA, automatic private internet protocol addressing. Usually one of the P's are protocols. Um, you know, uh, S is usually secure or security, um, or standard. Uh, it doesn't really help you, but it could help you with some things. Um, here we have with CRC, which is cyclical redundancy checking. This is when switches, um, calculate a number based on the packet. Uh, it's some mathematical calculation and then it has a CRC number and it sends that packet, uh, over to another switch and that switch also checks if um you know that cyclical the crc number is matching the one before the packet was sent so we know if there was any troubles during transmission so you know the sender will have a number the receiver will calculate its own number and if they if they don't match the receiver i think says hey can you send that packet again because something happened between transit my crc number is different than yours um, there are, uh, I'm not sure how secure this is, but that is very good for troubleshooting because it'll tell you what switch has a problem, what the problem is, things like that. So that's enough about that. Um, you don't need to know all these, uh, things, all these, um, acronyms are all just, most of them are not very, they're not really, uh, part of the exam. That's pretty much it. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, if you enjoyed, leave a like. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little bit different than the security plus one. That one was more methodology behind taking the exam. This one was kind of going over the main concepts of the exam. I think I'll do this more for other tests. Um, the CISA and the pen test is a little bit of a different beast. Um, the way they try to ask questions is completely different. It's, you don't even need much technical knowledge, believe it or not for the, you need to know analytical skills and pick up clues anyway. I will see you all later. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for the support on the Security Plus video. That one did really well. Um, and I enjoyed the comments that were left on that. Um, thank you so much. And if you need questions, definitely leave a comment. Or if you see a comment you can help out as well, go ahead and put your input in. Any input helps. People are here to help you. I'm here to help you out pass this exam. Um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.